Many people are going to give you advice and pile on their thoughts when you're starting a new business, especially when it comes to the product you will be creating. There will be people who support you, but most of the time, family and friends are going to be skeptical. That won't work. That's not good enough. How can you be sure that the product you are developing is the right one and you are on the right path? In this video, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to lay the foundation for a successful product. Having your own startup is tough. It's long hours, a bunch of stress and hard work. To add to the pile of crap you have to deal with every day, there's a bunch of naysayers. You will be constantly bombarded with people saying that it won't work and you should give up. The most important personality trait a successful founder must have is determination. You have to truly believe that what you are trying to create is going to make money and through the fog of doubt, maintain a level of confidence that only a handful of people possess. I have overcome this barrier by using the problem first strategy. When creating any product, the first questions I ask are who is the target group and what problem are we solving? The more grounded the problem, the easier it will be to sell your product. I have seen many, many different pitches by startups that simply are not solving any problem. They usually have a product idea that's a little bit better than what already exists or they're just based on gimmicks. You need to be brutally honest here. No bullshit. No fancy marketing or sales tactics, just simply solving a real world problem. If your startup pitch is based on marketing costs, then you need to rethink your product. By the way, stay tuned till the end for some awesome tips and tricks for when you're just starting out. Once you get through this idea phase and have clearly defined what the problem is that you want to solve, you move into the product creation phase. This is where I usually disagree with the current industry model, the MVP model. MVP stands for minimum viable product. It basically states that you need to focus on product development to create an MVP, launch and then reassess. I prefer the jungle testing model. You can always test your idea by creating a landing page with some content explaining what the problem is and how you intend to solve it, get some feedback and then move forward. Of course, this model is not always viable, but most of the time you can get some great feedback from the community before you move into costly production. I have done this a couple of times, even to the point of pre-selling subscriptions to a product that does not exist to fund the actual R&D. We sold $145,000 worth of subscriptions in seven days with only a landing page and a video. Of course, we delivered on that promise and launched the product within a month. Once you are live and have your first thousand users, things start to become more interesting. You are seeing usage patterns, you're getting feedback, users start asking for certain features so you have more capacity of building the product to their needs. I always say that you should not be developing products for the users but with the users. Engage and involve them as much as possible in the product development process and your numbers will exponentially grow. Last but not least, there are three key things you need to keep in mind when you're developing your product. These are three tips and tricks I have learned through trial and error. They have become the cornerstone of successful startups everywhere. Number one, the toothbrush effect, or as Google calls it, the toothbrush test. You use your toothbrush every day. You don't even think about it, it simply becomes a habit. The more you can develop your product to be used every day, the more your product can become a habit for your users and the easier it will be to scale. The same way you use your toothbrush, you log into Instagram, check out videos on YouTube, etc. Number two, the snowball effect. The snowball effect refers to word of mouth. The more your users actually use your product, the more word of mouth you should be receiving. Take DocuSign for example or Calendly. I received a Calendly link to book a time with a business contact. I loved the idea and I bought a subscription. You get free awareness by just the usage of your product, thus free word of mouth. Number three, added value from the users. This is a bit of a tricky one, but it's probably the most important. Your user base should be adding value to your product or service. This means that the more users you have, the better and more awesome your product becomes. A great example of this is Uber. The more driver Uber gets, the more the drivers are in competition with each other, and that leads to better service for the end user. Users add value in a variety of ways, but you need to understand how your user base can and help you deliver better value. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this week's video. And if you did, please help us out and hit that subscribe button. See you next week.